focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Welcome to EY Entrepreneur of the Year India Awards 2017. EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2017 India program culminated in a gala award ceremony in Mumbai. The program felicitated exceptional entrepreneurs who had embraced disruption and spurred new trends in their industries. Celebrating the stories of these achievers is the Passion to Win series that showcases India's best innovators and game changers. I think certainly there are again a lot of opportunities, especially given the huge boom in the uh, consumer sentiment in India and a lot of opportunities for companies in those areas. Hello and welcome to the third episode of Passion to Win, a series that showcases the entrepreneurial journey of the winners of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2017 awards. I'm Shireen Bhan. While our first winner is from a family of influential business leaders, he's made his mark by consistently displaying great ingenuity to turn every challenge into an opportunity. Today, he is the managing director of a leading national player in India's core manufacturing sector. Let's take a look at the inspiring story of Puni Dalmia from the Dalmia Bharat Group. After not being able to clear his engineering entrance exam, Puni did not lose hope. I wrote my engineering exam. I didn't get in anywhere uh, in IIT or Bitspilani or Roorkee or BHU. So, and I was a reasonably good student in school. So at that time, it was a little bit of a setback for me that uh, I was a good student in school, but uh, I didn't get in anywhere. Uh, so it was a moment where I kind of looked into myself and said that, look, I have to uh, you know, work harder. And in my second attempt, I got into IIT. And then I, uh, I went to IIT Delhi, I did my engineering there, I did my MBA after that in IIM Bangalore. So I think very good things happened in terms of I went into good colleges and did my undergrad and post-graduation. If you have faith and if you continue to do your work with detachment, without expecting anything, ultimately good things will happen. After completing his studies, Puneet was determined to join the family business. But there was to be a twist in the tale. I joined my family business. And for two years, I worked in um, our cement business. Then I left the family business in May of 99. And I started an internet company uh, with a friend of mine uh, from IIT Delhi. Uh, we co-founded a company called jobsahead.com. Recognizing the venture's potential, many investors wanted to invest their money in Jobs Ahead. So we raised money from uh, Chris Capital and at that time Ashish uh, Dhawan had just started his uh, fund and um, he had just moved back to India. So Ashish was the um, you know, early first investor in, uh, in Jobs Ahead. Uh, and um, then uh, six months later we were ready to go to Series B of financing. And again, markets were booming, we had no revenue, but we had a lot of customers. We spent that initial money on building the website and uh, building our brand, we advertised, so we were much more known. And suddenly, a company which was nine months old, uh, Star TV was talking to us, and a global private equity fund was talking to us. And um, uh, they wanted to put in uh, almost $20 million into the company for a 15% stake. So we were really surprised, company is nine months old, no visibility of revenue, forget profitability. But, you know, this was the world that we were living in. In 2004, Puneet rejoined his family business. After that, we sold Jobs Ahead uh, in 2004. And um, uh, I joined my family business. It was a, a very different uh, culture here. It was a, it was a company which had uh, strong values, uh, very strong balance sheet, great cash flows, uh, but no ambition. So we started thinking about this and we thought that we had to rewrite our operating system completely. And this meant starting with the family. Over the years, Puneet has introduced a host of operational changes at Dalmia Bharat Group. 
in in the last 10 years as um, you know we grew uh, there were three fundamental changes in our operating system one was the role of the family it changed from running operations to giving a strategic direction and managing and building the culture second our corporate structure changed instead of having a diversified uh, you know conglomerate which was sub scale we had pure play companies which had reasonable scale and thirdly our shareholder our ownership structure changed so in our shareholder register we had more institutional shareholders private equity funds large financial institutions and um, you know now even some pension funds so i think um, this has been a story where there has been a fundamental rewriting of our operating system but what is the mantra for success let's get pudi dalnia's perspective you know work very hard but be detached to the outcome and uh, it is very difficult at times but i think the more detached you are the more you can give one of puneet's close friends shares his thoughts on him so i think puneet's that shining example of a young person who is privileged but has really taken advantage of you know viewed it as trusteeship as responsibility almost and done work on that basis Dalmia was awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2017 in the manufacturing category. Here's wishing him the very best of luck. The winner is Puneet Dalmia of Dalmia Bharat Group. to the end of this segment on the other side we introduce you to another entrepreneur he took over his father's business and single-handedly transformed it into one of india's most innovative medical drug companies Welcome back you're watching Passion to Win our next winner is a second generation entrepreneur who took over his father's business around 2 decades ago and turned it into India's biggest medical drug manufacturing company through the dint of his drive and innovative ideas we're talking about none other than Glen Saldana the chairman and managing director of Glenmark Pharma around 23 years after Gracia Saldana founded a pharmaceutical company his son took up its reins to chart a rich history so my father started his career also as a as a medical rep and worked his way up uh, glenmark was founded in 1978 so almost 40 years of uh, uh, of existence as a company um, and he basically built the business from ground up uh, so i'm a second generation promoter uh, i took over in 2000 he transitioned the business from 98 to 2000 to me and i've been running the firm now 17 18 years after returning from the us glen wanted to evolve the systems and operations at glenmark to make the company future ready you know when i moved back from the us my first order of business was um you know to to restructure the whole india operations uh, at that point uh, 95% of our revenues came out of india so it was most of the business and i got heavily involved in in reshaping the whole indian business uh putting the right management team putting the right structure in place and then growing those business uh, growing that business through new product uh, introduction after ushering in reforms at glenmark glen saltana wanted to take the company global we wanted to de-risk ourselves from india right and uh, truly build a global platform Uh, and we also wanted to build a uh, front end capability so if we do have an innovative product we can actually commercialize uh, our innovation into all these commercial front ends all over the world and that's the structure that we embarked on trying to build out so i was able to travel the world go country by country build infrastructure put a flag in each market and scale businesses what is glenmark's biggest differentiator the chairman and managing director shares his insight you know our biggest uh, differentiator today which is what we set up back in 2000 was the whole innovation aspect right we ipoed the company in 2000 and uh, uh, you know took the proceeds and and built an r&d center for innovation which is here in new bombay um, and since then uh, we we embarked on innovation here is one of glen's close associates 
talking about Glenn's vision for the company. He has um, a, a complete vision for where he wants this company to be. And that he has held on to that vision over um, the entire time that I've known him. Um, you know, from, from taking the company which was purely branded generics, India domestic business, to what it is today, a global branded generics business, but most importantly, what he's done on the, uh, the new, new molecules and uh, the new areas which, you know, many Indian companies have tried and failed, but to continue to hold that faith, um, the, the level of dedication and intensity that it requires, um, that's something absolutely remarkable. Glenn Saldhana shares the secret to his success. Part of our DNA is we're very persistent, we never give up. Uh, we stay on the course and we just keep doing it over and over again and better and better. And that's what's got us here basically. Due to his grit and determination, Glenn Saldhana took the company down the path of innovation, making it amongst one of the biggest Indian pharmaceutical companies along the way. Ken Saldana was awarded the EBI Entrepreneur of the Year 2017 in the Life Sciences and Healthcare category. The winner is Glenn Saldana of Denmark. More inspirational stories coming up. Sundar Ginomal of Page Industries is on the show. Welcome back, you're watching Passion to Win. Our next entrepreneur is someone who through his high quality products and his pioneering marketing skills altered the way Indians perceive innerwear and in the process changed his own fortune. He has made Jockey an aspirational brand in the Indian innerwear segment. We are talking about Sundar Ginomal of Page Industries. After having enjoyed a successful association with the US innerwear brand Jockey in the Philippines, when Sundar Ginomal was given the offer of introducing the brand to India in 1994, he took it up, recognizing the brand potential, despite never having lived or done business in India. The early 90s, when India was opening up its doors to foreign investments and foreign brands, uh, Jockey, which is obviously a USA brand, uh, was approached by several companies in India. Uh, they actually asked us to accompany them because they're, this is a strange country for them, uh, from, you know, coming from the US, they had not been here before. And so the, I came with the president of Jockey and uh, kind of we looked around the market and assessed what the potential was. A few months later and said, why don't you guys take the license for India instead? So at that time, we had been the, license in the licensee in the Philippines for 35 years because my father started the business in 1959. So it was quite a shock to hear that from them. And my first reaction to the then president of Jockey was, you know, I've never lived in India because I grew up in the Philippines, never done business there. Yes, we go occasionally to visit our sisters who are married there, but that's the extent of our exposure to India. He said, no, th this is uh, something that we've thought through and uh, we feel much more comfortable giving the license to you guys whom we, we've known for 35 years because we share the same values. And somehow we didn't find the, the correct culture, the marketing and the quality culture in the companies that had applied uh, for the license in India. And uh, so this is how it all began. Entering the Indian market came with a unique mix of opportunities and challenges. So we, we were very confident about the, the manufacturing, the back end side of the business, because that's what we were doing. It's the same thing that we would duplicate over here. Just a matter of sending technicians to train the people here. And I had, uh, with Mr. Albal, our project manager, had already uh, uh, met several, uh, uh, you know, yarn suppliers, uh, processors, fabric processors, uh, and so on. Uh, so that we, uh, it was a time when India was also uh, uh, getting into export in a big way. 
So a lot of these uh, uh, textile mills were actually compliant with jockey standards. So it was easy for that. That part was easy. The the manufacturing, the back end, the sourcing on the technical side, uh, sourcing of fabrics and so on. Uh, the daunting part, the daunting side was the distribution. But as Sundar Genomal would admit himself, his journey has not been without adversities. We could not have our products sold the way Innerwear was being sold at that time. In showcases, without packaging, uh, where more often than not the salesperson would decide what the customer would buy in terms of what size, what color. There was, you know, uh, there was just no respect for the category. It was a very low profile item, not only among consumers, but even among, probably because of the retailers not giving it importance, the consumers also felt, oh, this is nothing, it's just something we wear. But uh, we, of course, changed the landscape for retail. Uh, it wasn't all about selling, it wasn't a commodity, it was something that we needed to market and make people understand the importance of choosing. That was the biggest challenge the importance of choosing the right innerwear. Sundar Ginomal shares his growth mantra. Our business plans were well laid, uh, correctly laid down, again because of our experience and our culture and our, the fact that we enjoy the business. Uh, we enjoy treating the consumers with great products. From day one, there was no compromise. I used to myself be in the factory floor for the first few months uh, with the quality control, apart, not just the production manager, but the quality control supervisor and teaching her what to pass, what not to pass in terms of quality. Classify this as A, classify this as B or C. C is, and B and C, there's no way it's going to go into the market. So. It's those kind of things, the attention to detail, attention to quality right from the beginning, uh, the fact that uh, it was always, the consumer experience was always paramount. Uh, it's based on this foundation that our growth started. Let's hear what Sundar Genomal has to say to budding entrepreneurs. As an entrep entrepreneur, I feel that's very important. You, you're, you're starting a business that you enjoy. Uh, you're, you're, you have a passion for it. You, you, you have a core competency. You've done your business plan. You've asked all the hard questions. You've decided it's viable or feasible. You better get a great team to, uh, to, to be with you and, and execute and work with you, not for you. Sundar Ginomal was awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2017 in the consumer products and retail category. The winner is Mr. Sundar Ginomal of Page Industries. That is a wrap on the third episode of this special four-part series celebrating the inspiring success stories of the winners of the 19th EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We'll be back with another episode soon. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye and thanks for watching. Presented by EY, building a better working world.